CTV News with Jackie Scantlebury. Good afternoon. As the search continues for a former Lethbridge man missing in Vancouver, his girlfriend has now arrived from Colorado to lend a helping hand. Matthew Huzar's girlfriend, Emily Whitmore, is in town to see his family and help out in the search for the missing 25-year-old. Huzar vanished on December 16th. He was last seen in Gastown leaving a Christmas party. Emily said she last spoke to Matthew that night and said he was in good spirits. She can't think of a reason why he would just up and leave. No phenomenal place in his life. He's a successful geologist. Um, <clears throat> he, he's a great family that cares about him. He's got a good social network. Um, he just got a sailboat. Um, it's in Victoria and uh, that's his pride and joy right now. Um, there's no reason that he would leave at all. It's been an extremely difficult time for the Huzar family. They formerly lived in Lethbridge up until about a year ago. The 25-year-old was supposed to spend the holidays with his mom and dad on Vancouver Island. Instead of celebrating Christmas, his parents continued their frantic search for their son. Shahid Dejevi reports. They tried keeping things normal at Christmas, but this year it was anything but for the Huzars. It was just very tough not having Matt there. It's kind of a big hole in the family. Matthew Huzar went missing after a staff Christmas party the night of December 16th. The 25-year-old geologist hasn't been heard from since. Yeah, it is frustration, but it's also a, a real feeling of helplessness that uh, there's no information out there about what happened that night. It's been more than a week now since Matthew Huzar was last seen outside the lamplighter here in Gastown. Since then, family and friends have been searching frantically, hoping for any information. It's very daunting. It's very extremely frustrating, too. Friends have plastered posters with Matthew's face across the city. They now also hang on rider alert boards at several SkyTrain stations. I was really hoping at this point in the game when, uh, you know, when everyone in Vancouver knows about Matt that some kind of information would have trickled in. But nothing yet, even after police released a photo of Matthew at a bank machine on the night he went missing. A bank machine which matches the profile of this one at the Royal Bank at Nelson and Howe. We've thought of everything. Try to try to not think about it, but yeah, I've got no idea what we can do. We've tried pretty much everything. Police have been hard at work too, canvassing Gastown, looking for tips. We have really very little information still to go on to, to know really what happened to him. The Hoosars have been told there's no evidence Matthew has been harmed. So for now, his gifts await him under the tree and his family holds out hope. I think our whole family wants him to know that we love him very much and we're very worried about him. We just want to know that he's safe. We pray that he's safe and that he will be able to come home soon. Shahid Devji, CTV News. Matthew's girlfriend Emily describes Huzar as a hard-working guy who doesn't party that much. She says he recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica and always notifies anyone before he goes anywhere. Well, it's been a frustrating day for anyone trying to drive between Golden and Revelstoke. Highway 1 was closed most of the day in B.C. because of avalanche risk in the area. These are some webcam shots from the Drive B.C. website earlier today. 30 centimeters of fresh snow, big mountains and winds up to 70 clicks, all add up to high avalanche hazards. Avalanche control teams were trying to bring down the most threatening slopes. They monitor 144 in Glacier National Park. The bombs bring down the unstable layers of snow, then heavy equipment clears away the snow. Avalanche risk remains high throughout the entire region, affecting the Kootenai Boundary Region, the Lizard Range, the Purcells, and the South Columbia Mountain Range. The risk is considerable in Kananaskis country and the South Rockies. Highway 3 was closed at the Kootenai Pass in BC today because of the avalanche control as well. Well, after five days of on and off wind warnings across southern Alberta, they're off again tonight. Environment Canada issued the warnings as winds gusted up to 100 kilometers per hour today. The warning was ended earlier this afternoon. Okay, Dory Rossiter, can we expect more winds to come back yet again? <laughs> yeah, you just mentioned that the wind warnings have ended for southern Alberta, but they could be reinstated again overnight tonight. We're expecting another blast of wind, and even tomorrow morning we're expecting uh, the winds to be fairly strong. So we'll have to wait and see how strong they're going to be, but uh, don't be surprised if we're back in wind warning criteria overnight tonight for sure. Somehow I won't be surprised, Dory. More weather coming up. 
family and friends continue to mourn the death of a familiar face in the Cochrane area today. Rick Butler was a counselor in the Rocky View County. He died Monday after a ski accident in Nikiska, west of Calgary. The 55-year-old lost control while skiing and hit a tree. He was conscious on the hill while being treated by ski patrollers, but his condition started to deteriorate as he was rushed to hospitals by ambulance in critical condition. Butler was pronounced dead at the foothills. Butler was the founding executive director of the Calgary Regional Partnership and operated a hobby farm in the county. And early yesterday morning, a 27-year-old Calgary man died at Golden BC's Kicking Horse Resort. The man was with a group of six people who hiked up a closed ski run around 1 a.m. and then went down on an inner tube. As he was sliding down, he hit a wooden post at the bottom of a chairlift. The man was rushed to Golden Hospital where he was pronounced dead. His name has not been released. A resort spokesman says they don't allow any kind of night skiing or sledding. Well, the chair of the Alberta Health Services Board is stepping down. Ken Hughes is leaving his position early. His current term doesn't expire until March 21st, 2012, but says he is leaving to pursue other interests. It's been widely rumored that Hughes will seek the PC nomination in Calgary West after a vacancy by retiring Finance Minister Ron Leipert. But Hughes is being coy and hasn't confirmed the rumors. If there's anything to say on that, uh, that, would be, that would be another year. So maybe in the future. Yeah, maybe in the future. Maybe 2012. In the future. 2012 in the spring we might see you again. You never know. <laughs> Hughes' resignation is effective immediately. Alberta Health Services says a new chair will be found in the early new year. Vice Chair Catherine Rusin will fill in until then. Coaldale's ambulance care will be closed New Year's Eve because of a doctor shortage. Ambulances won't be running from 5 o'clock in the afternoon on December 31st until 8 o'clock the next morning. There isn't a doctor available that evening, but emergency medical services will provide critical care coverage at Coaldale Health Center. If an emergency should happen, residents should still call 911. For less urgent health situations, people can go to the Raymond Health Center or Chinook Regional Hospital or you can even call HealthLink Alberta for advice from a registered nurse. Well, a man is in custody after a lengthy standoff with police in Medicine Hat. Officers were first told of an emotionally disturbed man who was contacted, who had contacted rather, the Calgary Distress Center Tuesday afternoon. The 45-year-old told workers that he had a high-powered rifle and that he would shoot anyone who went onto his property and would burn it down if he needed to. Five hours of negotiations later and the man exited the home. Formal charges including uttering death threats and assaulting a police officer are expected to be laid. Well, Lethbridge Regional Police say internal theft is on the rise in the city. In our economic crime unit this last year has been inundated. We have about four or five uh, internal theft complaints that are quite large in nature and they all have similar characteristics of someone taking care of the books that has too much responsibility and too much access to gaining the checks and, and cashing things in their own favour. So we really, really, really suggest that you divide those responsibilities. And in this case, uh, lots of cooks in the kitchen is a good thing, not a bad thing. To help combat the problem, regional police, along with Myers Norris Penny, will be holding a special presentation on keeping your business or charity organization safe. The program will run January 24th at the Fritzig Center. It's free to the public and officials say there is important information that will help prevent internal theft. The City of Lethbridge wants you to know about some changes to the transit system over the holidays. Buses will be running on a Saturday schedule, New Year's Eve, and there will be no transit service on New Year's Day. There will be no changes to garbage collection schedules since New Year's falls on a weekend this year. Officials at Exhibition Park are busy putting the finishing touches on their New Year's celebrations. The 16th annual Family Fest runs New Year's Eve in both the North and South pavilions at the park. Families can enjoy a dance party, face painting and games. All of the activities are free. The event is catered towards children ages 12 and under. under it runs from 6 until 10 p.m. It was the first full day for the markets after the holiday breaks for both Canada and the U.S. Here's how it wrapped up.